What's up everyone, Sean here. Got an exciting video for you guys. I am doing this video on canopy growth. Now, if you're new here, I'm going through a bunch of cannabis companies, both Canadian and American, um, going through good and bad, trying to check out the sector, see what might be the best value or a good buy if we're looking to invest here. So today is an exciting one because canopy growth, I have a little bit of history with. Um, back in 2016, I, uh, I kind of uh, bought a few shares there. They're around like eight bucks and I watched that stock like kind of skyrocket to like 72 and come up and down and and I, I kind of uh, offloaded actually at about 28 bucks and I kind of got out because it was getting a little too volatile for me and my knowledge level at that time so anyway it was fun to kind of check this out and I'm excited to do a, a kind of an update for myself and uh, for you guys on this company so, so let's just jump into this right away and talk about canopy growth All right, so I have a little bit of a history for you guys on this one. Now, founded in 2013 by Bruce Linton and Chuck Rafici. You guys probably already know Bruce Linton's no longer there. He's gone off and started um, like SPACs and other things at this point. So he's no longer at the company. Current CEO is David Klein. Now, David Klein describes it as a world leading diversified cannabis and cannabinoid based product company. Notice it says product company and Canopy grows their own cannabis, manufactures the products and sells it under many different brands. We are gonna get into all of those brands a little bit later now they provide both uh, medical and rec recreational products which we have seen kind of across the board with everyone all the different companies we've looked at um, I feel like the company is a little more akin to Tilray just in the way that they're kind of set up the feel uh, from the website and uh, you can see that it's kind of like not really showcasing a lot of people or products it's got a very sort of professional I'll call it looking thing where it's where it's where a motif where it's really just showcasing the brands, um, the products itself that it sells and, and many uh, and the many arms of Canopy, including like a little bit of the R&D. So it's got a very more uh, professional kind of logo driven website. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the brands of this company. I'm gonna go through this huge list now. So bear with me, um, here are all the different brands offered by Canopy. So Tweed, which offers, you know, your traditional flower, traditional products that uh, are offered by, you know, most cannabis companies. They have partnered with Martha Stewart on a line of edibles. They have another company called Houseplant, which is more like a entry level. Um, they've got a small line of products. It's kind of like your gateway into this whole cannabis uh, community. Tokyo Smoke, so those are cannabis products as well as accessories. There's one called Deep Space, which is a carbonated drink that has THC in it. There's TWD, uh, which is kind of the value brand of all the same types of products, maybe of Tweed. Quattro, which is a cannabis infused sparkling water. Simple Stash, which is a low price dried flower. LBS, which is, you know, more of the same product lines. Um, DNA Genetics, which uh, is kind of a partnership to help actually, I think this is like the R&D part, which is helping improving the growing and procurement of uh, cannabis itself and, and their processes. Doja or DOGA, West Coast grower of the flower. This was, they were purchased by uh, Canopy there. Surety Pro, which is the CBD. This is actually for dogs and they have soft chews and other products for pets. Um, I, I'm assuming as part of therapy for your pet should they need it. There is Ace Valley, which was a recent acquisition. We'll talk more about that, but there's pre-rolls, vapes, and gummies there. Um, Vert, it's a Quebec exclusive brand, and it's grown there in the province, and uh, I believe that is kind of because of some regulations there in Quebec. It's got dried fl flour and pre-rolls, but the most interesting one to me is this one with BioSteel. And BioSteel is a company that actually makes those electrolyte replacements and protein powders for athletes. It's co-started by a former Calgary Flame, Mike Camilleri, who was just trying to make kind of clean lines of, of these types of products for athletes. So I kind of thought that that was really interesting because I haven't seen that at, on any of the other competitors. And there's this, um, there are a few products that are cannabis infused um, kind of uh, products for athletes. So protein powders, etc. And the idea there is since CBD has been taken off the list of kind of uh, restricted drugs from like the Olympics and stuff, um, they're putting this into the into their products as a way of as, as like therapy and recovery for the athlete should that be what they need um, as part of their diet and workout routine. So that's a different take that we kind of don't see from other companies. I just wanted to kind of highlight that one a little bit. There are other interesting deals in place here. So Canopy actually holds a deal with Acreage Holdings, which is actually a US company. Should the, and when the government in the US makes, uh, you know, 
cannabis federally acceptable and, and allowed, uh, a deal would go through with Acreage to give Canopy a foothold in the US market. So Acreage, you know, makes a lot of the same set of types of products, but they would be in, already situated in the US, which is kind of an interesting play by Canopy there. They also hold a 21% stake in a company called TerraSend. Did I say that right? Care Ascend, yes. And uh, so they do have a little bit of a US presence in, in kind of like a indirect way, but they're in Tilray's boat in the sense that they can't really go full bore on the US market because the regulations are still being figured out at a federal level, which kind of keeps Canadian companies sort of on the outside while American companies are operating on a state by state basis right now. All right, so let's jump into the quarterly news or the highlights from the last investor's quarterly report. I'll put that up on the screen right now. So there are some significant things to note here. A 37% growth in net revenue from 2021 to 2020, double digit growth, growth across all of their businesses. And we'll talk about that in more detail in the financial highlights. Um, they've redesigned the org structure because Canopy keeps continuing to grow and, and acquiring other businesses. So you gotta do that. The right size of their, produ for their production footprint, which I think is part of the same, and 57% improvement in free cash flow, which is a good positive sign. As they continue to build momentum into 2022, they've announced more Canadian acquisitions. They are investing in insights and innovation in their R&D uh, to come up with new products. They are trying to improve the flower quality. And then when it comes to the US, the US CBD business is on its path to establishing a leadership position. Um, BioSeal is one of the companies as well that operates in the US. Now BioSeal has recently signed some deals with big retailers like Target, AMPM, and Circle K to be sold there. So that is a, is a nice way that Canopy is getting their uh, footprint into the US as well. So, you know, kind of exciting there. Probably not the way that most companies would want to do it, but this is the way that Canopy is going about it. Now, they are not profitable, and you can tell from this last statement where they're remaining on a path to achieve profitability. We'll get into their KPIs, their key performance indicators later, and uh, how they're doing on those to get to profitability too. Other things to note here is that Canopy um, has had a couple acquisitions. So they are going to acquire all of another cannabis brand called Supreme. This uh, acquisition has been approved. It brings a premium, low cost, scalable cultivation facility to Canopy, Canopy's production capabilities as well. And they have an opportunity to achieve cost synergies at $30 million within two years. They are expecting to close this in June 2021. Now Supreme produces products for both medicinal and recreational use in both North America and internationally. And this adds six more brands to Canopy's already long list of brands. Canopy has also acquired Ace Valley, which uh, does, a few, does a few smaller products. I think they have vapes and chews and, and, uh, and kind of a, a smaller line, but they've acquired that brand um, as they are profitable. They operate in Ontario. And so they've taken them over, I think as a way to kind of um, start to edge their way towards profitability like they want to take on more profitable companies and they expect that there should be even more uh, profit there as they find synergies with this one as well. So those are two kind of uh, acquisitions that are worth noting for the last quarter um, that are in the works for Canopy. Now I'll put up a slide here to talk about some of the financial highlights. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more details on the numbers. So here you go. Now revenues are up across all the sectors of Canopy, both on the quarter and uh, year over year for Q4. So that is positive and we can see from the slide that that is indeed true. Like all these sectors are growing. Um, the gross margin performance, however, is kind of struggling a bit. Notice that in Q4, the gross margin has decreased and you want this to be increasing to give you a chance to have a higher profit margin. So um, that's kind of a little bit of a, that's a little bit discouraging. Now, as far as OPEX trends go, you can see that, that the operation expenses are actually decreasing across the company uh, as a whole and as well across each individual sector. So that's always nice to see. Finally, the EBITDA was trending in the right direction, but lagged in Q4 and the free cash flow from operations is also trended up a bit, but a bit less in Q4 as well. So um, you, we'll see this kind of in the next slide for the key performance indicators, which is right here. So you can see like market share in Canada is on target. And I think that's because of all the acquisitions that Canopy is doing. Uh, and it's worth noting too, Canopy also has um, some operations in Germany and same sort of trend is happening there. Now you can see in the US it's all red because basically 
they, they can't achieve their goal if, if they can't officially get into that country to operate. So um, they're missing the target mostly because of that. In the meantime, their competition is setting up shop in those states. So I'm not sure how this is gonna go uh, when that finally becomes legal, but um, it's an interesting one to watch. I'll jump down to kind of positive cash flow. That one is going okay, but profitability is this big one for me. And we can see that it's missing the targets. And that's because of what we just talked about in the previous slide. Um, it was improving, getting there, but not really uh, kind of fell off in Q4 for the EBITDA and the gross margin there. So um, something for you know the CEOs to kind of address and hopefully reverse that trend uh, in the coming future. Now, let's talk really quickly about the price to sales ratio. So the trailing 12 month PS ratio is 17.73, which is actually the highest of um, all the companies I think I've reviewed so much. So what that would tell you in comparison, it's stock price currently uh, where it's sitting is not as good of a deal as some of the other companies that are there. Now I will update the PS ratio as well as talk about a bunch of other factors when I do my big comparison video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you guys are aware for when that video drops. Now I've got a few things to say here when we're talking about whether Canopy is a buy and it's kind of interesting. Um, I waffled on this a few times, but hear me out uh, as to where my position is. Now, there are a lot of things to obviously like about Canopy. I do feel it's very similar to Tilray, just in the feel of the company, the way it's set up. They're both Canadian. They both have operations kind of like in Canada and in Europe. So there's a lot of similarities there. Now, part of what I don't like is that it suffers from the same weaknesses as Tilray in the fact that these federal regulations in the US are preventing it from getting at that golden nugget, which is the US market. In the meantime, U.S. companies are setting up uh, state by state as this becomes legal on a state uh, level. And I am fearful that they'll have kind of a stranglehold on the market by the time the, U the Canadian companies are allowed to sort of get in. Now, although the CEO of Canopy Growth said, you know, they're going to be in the U.S. market, uh, you know, in 2021, it's not really up to him. It's kind of up to Biden and the regulations and how uh, those get approved, which we're seeing take quite a lot of time and, uh, you know, could could delay things for a bit. Well, don't be surprised if this even stretches to the end of the year before um, any sort of progress is made. Now, here's actually the, the, the one thing that makes me more nervous about Canopy is that while it's not operating in a ton of countries, it does have a super long list of brand names. Um, just scrolling through the website. The page seems to go on and on and on with all the different brands. And remember, they've added six more brands to this. And I get that you want to have lines, uh, different lines of products to appeal to different types of people and age groups and stuff. But what I'm afraid of is that you have so many that overlap making the same types of products that you're actually going to get inefficient trying to produce all of these. So it would be hard for me to really know without diving into all the details that I don't even know if, if they're available. But that is one thing where I am, I am, I know that Canopy is trying to acquire these companies to get itself to profitability. But if it doesn't do it in an efficient way, um, that path can be lengthened or they may not even get there because they're trying to juggle all these brands and keep all of these afloat. I'm sure there are some efficiencies that Canopy is going to look at to try and mitigate that problem. But uh, that said, I do like BioSteel. I think it's a cool way to get into a different sort of uh, product line, a different market with like the, the sports stuff. And it's an interesting play to get into the US market because of you know the deals that it's making down south of the border. And while it pains me to to put another Canadian company in the penalty box. A little bit of a hockey joke there. Again, when I compare it to the rest, I feel like I'm kind of, I'm gonna group this with Tilray in its position right now, probably in a better position to get into the US than Tilray is right now because of some of the deals it's, it's got pre-structured. But when you've got other companies that are already profitable and growing, um, they just look so much more attractive than some of the others that are not there yet, especially Canopy that's been around for years. So that's kind of where I'm gonna leave it right now. I'm putting it in that group with Tilray that's kind of like, uh, it's not looking the best. So I wanna, I'm probably gonna focus on the smaller, leaner companies that are growing inside the US right now. But you know what? I've got one more to do. Uh, next video is gonna be about Cresco. And after that, let's compare them all and see if, uh, if you know, our minds change a little bit. Well, friends, that's all I have on Canopy Growth. Let me know what you think of the company in the comments. Maybe you agree or disagree. It's all good. We're all trying to learn here. So what do you guys think of Canopy Growth? Uh, let me know in the comments. Until next time, though, have a great week. Spread the wealth. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.